start. So this session is about rethinking, refocusing, recalibrating our approach to professional development and professional learning in the current circumstances. And the term that's widely used at the moment is the new normal. So I'm going to start off rather strangely today talking about tennis and the, the career of Roger Federer to make a point. Now, Roger Federer, when he began his tennis career, his first season as a professional, he was ranked 680th in the world. During that time, he won 49% of his pat, uh, matches and in doing so, won 49% of the points. Fast forward a few years, Roger Federer was ranked third in the world, was winning an impressive 79% of his matches and in achieving that, 52% of his points. Fast forward again, Roger Federer is the world's number one, the most successful men's tennis player in the history of the game ever, winning a, nine, a dominating 90% of his matches, and in doing so, 55% of his points. Now, I think this is a really powerful analogy in normal times, because when we are talking as experienced practitioners and professionals about going from good to great to being world-class, I think this idea of marginal gains and the focus we need to have around that improvement. So if we look at Federer here, it's just a 6% improvement in the points he's winning, but the impact that has on his overall level of performance is massive. And I think for experienced practitioners, this idea of marginal gains and going after those small areas of improvement and the impact they can have on our overall uh, level of performance is fantastic. But I think this analogy needs to, to shift. So uh, our thinking around professional learning at the moment, this is a lot less helpful. And I'll explain why. And, and it is clearly that things have changed. The picture at the top of the screen is what teaching once upon a time, back when everything was great, looked like. And, and today, uh, in our classrooms, in our schools, teaching looks quite different. And the two pictures uh, at the bottom of the screen capture that in that we currently have a lot of hybrid teaching going on. So we've got students joining our lessons virtually via Zoom and Microsoft Teams alongside students in front of us in the classroom but using technological devices and connecting at the same time with students at home. So this creates a lot of, uh, of challenges. And I think this piece of research by Rivkin et al. back in 2005 can be useful for us when we think about how we need to shift our mindset and our thinking at this time. Now, what this really shows us is the tremendous and rapid progress that teachers make in that early part of, of their career, particularly in the first two to three years, and how this sort of levels off. And again, that links back to the, the analogy I'm talking about with Feder. It's a lot more difficult uh, as experts, um, as people who are experienced, to make a, a difference in, in their level of performance. Now, there's a lot of research that connects to this um, from Helen Ladd, uh, and, and Pappy and Kraft that explores and expands this out. Um, I'm not gonna go into that now, um, just mention it because I think it, if you're interested, it is something to, to explore in a little bit more detail, this idea of the teacher plateau. But the reason I put this on the screen is really to, to concentrate in on that rapid progress we can make early in our careers, because I think it's it's the right mindset set shift to have at the moment. We are not trained, we're not experienced in the type of teaching and the way we're delivering uh, at the moment. So if we think like NQTs, I think we can unlock our ability to make rapid gains during uh, this time. And I think that's that's really important. Um, the analogy breaks down a little bit because we're not total novices. In fact, what we're doing and what we're able to do is to pull on a lot of transferable skills that have made us successful in the classroom and bring those back. So I think we can make even more rapid progress over the next few weeks, over the next couple of terms with this as practitioners. So I think that's the positive. 
Uh, I relate that back again to Federer. I think uh, Roger Federer would, would also make a fantastic squash player because he's got a lot of transferable skills. And if he took up squash, he'd, he'd be able to, I think, progress very, very quickly. So I think that that is a useful uh, way to think at the moment. So to, to take our, ourselves from being experts to thinking like novices in the new normal at the moment is useful. So just very quickly to outline my aims in this presentation, they're really twofold. Firstly, and I've covered this bit already, is why do we need to rethink and recalibrate our approach to professional learning at this time? And then secondly, the bit I'm going to move on to now is some ideas about what I think we need to do and how we can do it. And just to, to sort of be be open with this what i'm not offering i'm sorry to disappoint anyone is any magic solutions to this but what I, what i feel I, i'm going to offer is some some ideas that hopefully within what i talk about now are, are useful uh, to people tuning in to this so the approach we've taken at bsac really has three strands in it and the first one is about teachers being very reflective at this time with their practice. And I think that is the key to unlocking the ability to, to, to really progress and improve in our practice in terms of distance and hybrid learning, and then putting that into action. The second strand, and I think there is a real golden opportunity, and I'm positive with where we are, is, a, is an opportunity to collaborate because uh, professional learning suddenly becomes a lot more homogenous at this time. We've all got the same goals within schools and between schools. So there really is an opportunity for educational leaders and teachers to make the most of collaboration. Uh, and unsurprisingly, and as you know, I'm very passionate about the use of educational research and an evidence base. And while this area of research is not as developed or full, as other areas of leadership and teaching and learning, there are some incredibly useful things out there that we can draw on. And also, this is a great opportunity for a practitioner or joint research uh, to take place in, in this area to support what we're doing and to be contextualized in terms of our, our own practice. So I'm just briefly going to expand on each of those three areas and, and share a little bit about what we're doing at BSAC in this area. So in terms of encouraging uh, teachers to be reflective and providing a structure to that, we've put together a, a model that draws on two really important uh, bits of research around effective professional learning. One is Professional Learning for Impact by Gusky. The other is the Responsive Professional Learning Cycle, which is the work of Western and clay, and I think these two things fit nicely together. So as I said, this idea of a teacher reflecting, uh, reacting to what's happening in their classroom, using that to identify, explore areas in which things are working or things can be improved, developing that knowledge and understanding, and then using that actively to implement new ideas and apply them in the classroom, ultimately to drive through into the quality of educational provision, the experience of students and educational outcomes for our students. Now, we've added on top of that um, because it fits nicely, but also it, it makes an important point is this responsive professional learning cycle. A lot of the elements of, uh, are very similar, but what it does is it allows us to focus on this as a cycle because we're applying these things, we're not going to get it right. And I think that's another important point. The teachers need to be quite agile, quite responsive, uh, to take risks in their practice, to be comfortable with being uncomfortable and things not working out. So it's that idea of implementation, but then reflection and coming back on that cycle. Coming back to this idea about being a, uh, an NQT again, it's that idea for me of, a, of this rapid, very quick cycle on a lesson by lesson, week by week, month by month basis that's going to drive that improvement quickly. This idea of these long cycles or three professional development targets for the year, 
which is still common in a lot of performance development and, and management systems in school, I don't think is, is well suited for the, the situation we're currently in at the moment. The second point is really this idea of we're in a much more homogenous situation. Um, there is huge benefit in that in terms of the collaboration opportunities within departments, within schools, and between schools as well. And that can bring an awful uh, amount of uh, positivity um, and benefits to a school. And I think school leaders can think very carefully about how they can maximize those opportunities at this time and get the most out of collaboration to develop uh, um, our approach to online uh, learning. And the final point really is about drawing on research. As I said, there is not a huge amount out there, but there are some really important things um, that we can do uh, in terms of engaging with what research base there is. The Education Endowment Foundation back in April put together a, a rapid evidence uh, review and that document is incredibly interesting. And also if we're sharing this presentation, put a few links in there around other um, research resources that I've used that I think are, are useful and informative at this time. But it, it, it's also, as I said, the, the, the bit before that, it's a great opportunity for practitioner research within schools. It's a great opportunity to engage in joint research. So as you mentioned in the introduction, Ollie, and I know you had David Pedder on the show this week, we have a joint research project with the university looking at effective hybrid learning uh, processes and pedagogical um, approaches in, in the classroom to see what works effectively. So I think there is a, a real opportunity within that. And then just to show how this kind of knits together, we've got this reflective learning cycle for individual teachers and the approach in the green there supported by collaboration, supported by research, all driving towards impacting the quality of what we're doing and impacting on student outcomes. So just the, the final uh, bit of the presentation to draw some of these things together uh, and to recap in five points, really. The first is that things have changed. Um, we need to accept that. We need to understand that we have to adapt and respond to our professional learning at this time. We're moving from being experts to being novices to some degree again. And I think there is real power within accepting that and thinking back to our early career development as a teacher and thinking and improving like an NQT again. Secondly, I think the power of reflection is the key to this. I think we need to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. We need to speed up that cycle. It needs to be quicker and more rapid than normal circumstances. We have to accept that we are going to make mistakes and we're not gonna get things right as we trial things and take risks. But we also need to not be too hard on ourselves uh, and take it out on ourselves, which teachers often do. Uh, thirdly, to recognize that there is strength in numbers and to tap into that power of collective effort and collaboration at this time. Fourthly, is to draw on what research is there or better still, engage in practitioner research so that we are responsive to our own context. And finally, I think it's, uh, it is opportune to try to see positives disguised in, in this situation because I think that uh, in the longer term, particularly around the successful use of technology, that a lot of the, the benefits that will derive by uh, developing our approach to this will continue to impact positively even after the end of the uh, pandemic and things go back to normal. So as I said, no perfect solutions in there, but hopefully some ideas that teachers and leaders in education can take a, away, think about and draw on. So that's it from me. Uh, thank you very much.